So this is the gross appearance if you can appreciate is a well demarcated lesion as you can appreciate over here. Majority of the pheochromocytomas they are benign in nature. On one side you can see a very small amount of tissue which has been compressed and pushed. So the remaining normal tissue is pushed or the medullary tissue or the cortical tissue is put to the periphery. Now this is the fresh tissue which was immersed in potassium dichromate solution potassium dichromate solution and which has turned this entire specimen into dark brown color this has turned this specimen into dark brown color <coughs> okay and why why it has uh, turned it into dark brown color because of the oxidation of catecholamines and what is the name of this reaction it is called as chromaffin reaction it is classically seen in pheochromocytoma and is a very very important exam question Coming to the microscopic feature of pheochromocytoma, if you see, the characteristic appearance of pheochromocytoma is the presence of clusters and nests of tumor cells. So this cluster and nest of tumor cells, okay, this nest and this cluster that you appreciate, this is called as the characteristic zell bolin pattern and it is a characteristic feature of any kind of paraganglioma including pheochromocytoma. Now if you see these cluster of cells they are basically separated by a fibrovascular stroma okay they are with a they are separated by means of fibrovascular stroma as you can appreciate over here and among this fibrovascular stroma are certain supporting cells that is called as sustained tacular cells sustained tacular cells okay now one other important feature of this is that individual cells if you see these are the individual cells if you can appreciate these individual cells they are polygonal they are polygonal sometimes they might be spindle shaped also and the nucleus okay is round oval the nucleus is round or oval in nature and they have a prominent nuclei they have a hello students and welcome back to simply pathology Today we are going to start a series of lectures, the high yield topics. This is the lecture number one, high yield topic one and as you have already know from the thumbnail, today's topic of discussion is a very high yield topic, an important exam topic that is pheochromocytoma. Now before we delve with the pheochromocytoma, we have to understand the basics of pheochromocytoma. Now pheochromocytoma is the most common tumor which is arising from the adrenal medulla. Now this adrenal medulla is composed of two types of cells. One is a specialized neural crest cells also called as the neuroendocrine cells and it is also called as the chromaffin cell. And the other type of cell is a supporting cell called as the sustained tacular cell. So the adrenal medulla is composed of two types of cells. One is the chromaffin cell, another one is your sustained tacular cell. The adrenal medulla is a major source of catecholamines, especially the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. So we are going to understand first the classification of the tumors of the adrenal medulla. Okay, so the, the tumors of the adrenal medulla can be divided under four categories. The neoplasm of chromaffin cell, neoplasm of neuronal cell, composite pheochromocytoma and composite paraganglioma. Of them, the most important is the neoplasm of the chromaffin cells which can further uh, you know from the chromaffin cells two very important tumors arises one is your pheochromocytoma which is arising from the chromaffin cells present in the adrenals and extra adrenal paraganglioma okay which is arising from the chromaffin cells situated outside the adrenal so over here you have to understand a basic concept so any tumor okay when it is the paraganglioma when arising from the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla we call it as pheochromocytoma but if it is arising from the chromaffin cells outside uh, the adrenal medulla we call it as a paraganglioma okay now there are also neoplasms of the neuronal cells where we have neuroblastoma okay then we have ganglioneuroblastoma the nodular variety ganglioneuroblastoma the intermixed variety then we have ganglioneuroma. So these are the neoplasms of the neuronal cells. Now we are going to come under the section of extra adrenal paraganglioma and why we are want to discuss this because lots of questions are coming from the extra adrenal paraganglioma. So before we start pheochromocytoma, let us see the basic classification of extra adrenal paraganglioma. Now the extra adrenal paraganglioma can be divided under two headings. Okay. 
One is your head and neck paraganglioma, which is constituting 70% of all the extra adrenal paraganglioma. The other one is your paravertebral paraganglioma, constituting 30% of the extra adrenal paraganglioma. The head and neck paraganglioma is also called as the aorticopulmonary chain paraganglioma, whereas the paravertebral paraganglioma is also called as the organ of Zucker candle paraganglioma. Now, usually the head and neck paraganglioma they are basically parasympathetic in nature, whereas the paravertebral paraganglioma ganglioma they are sympathetic so we have parasympathetic and sympathetic paraganglioma the parasympathetic variety they rarely produce catecholamines whereas the paravertebral paraganglioma they produce catecholamines so a lot of questions come so among the extra adrenal paragangliomas or just paragangliomas it is the sympathetic it is the parasympathetic paraganglioma which is far more common as compared to the sympathetic variety now among the para uh, sympathetic paraganglioma if you see the classification we are having five important varieties over here. So the number one is the carotid body paraganglioma, aortic body paraganglioma, jugular tympanic uh, paraganglioma also called as glomus tympanicum or jugular, okay, vagal paraganglioma, oral paraganglioma. So out of all these parasympathetic extra adrenal paraganglioma, the most common variety is your carotid body paraganglioma which is an important MCQ question. Okay. Now, the oral paraganglioma, if you see, it arises from the nasopharynx, larynx, oral cavity, nose, etc. Now, among the most important MCQs that is asked, the most common paraganglioma, okay, it is the one arising from the adrenal medulla called as pheochromocytoma. The most common location of a paraganglioma, it is the adrenal medulla. And among the adrenal medullary tumors that we see, the most common adrenal medullary tumors seen in adult patients is your pheochromocytoma, whereas that one which is seen in pediatric patients is your neuroblastoma. So all these are very important exam MCQs. Now beginning with today's topic of discussion that is your pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma, if you see, it is the most common paraganglioma arising from the adrenal medullary chromaffin cells and they are the ones releasing catecholamines. Now, this is the one adrenal medullary tumor that is having a rule of 10. So, rule of 10 is very importantly applicable to pheochromocytoma. So, what is this rule of 10? So, the rule of 10 states that 10% of pheochromocytomas are extra adrenal. Okay, that is they will act as a paraganglioma. 10% of sporadic adrenal pheochromocytomas will be bilateral. In case of familial cases, okay, this uh, 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 percentage can go as uh, high as 50%. But uh, among the sporadic adrenal pheochromocytomas, 10% are bilateral. Now, 10% of adrenal pheochromocytomas are malignant, okay, they are malignant and the definition of malignant is defined by the presence of metastatic disease. This is also an important question which you have already seen in my community post, okay. Now, 10% of adrenal pheochromocytomas, they are not associated with hypertension and 10% are seen in the pediatric population and 10% shows calcification. So, this is the basic rule of 10 which is seen in case of pheochromocytoma. Now, one very important concept over here is that 25%, around 25% of the pheochromocytomas and the paragangliomas, they are familial with germline mutation. That is, they are inherited from the parents or from the grandparents. So, they are familial in nature, okay? And the mutations, the inherited mutations are said to be of germline nature, okay? So, this germline uh, mutation is present in 25% of all the pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas. That is, they are inherited from the parents. Now, such patients with uh, with familial germline mutations, they are far more younger than the usual patients and they usually present with bilateral tumors. So, as I already mentioned, patients with uh, with uh, germline or familial pheochromocytomas, usually around 50% of such patients present with bilateral tumors. Okay. Now, what are these germline mutations? So, these germline mutations are basically involving certain genes which are of two important categories. The category A group of gene, they enhance growth factor receptor signaling. Okay, and among them, the genes which are involved are number one is the RET gene and the syndrome associated is the MEN2A or MEN2B syndrome. The second important gene is your neurofibromatosis 1 gene and the syndrome associated is neurofibromatosis type 1 syndrome. 
okay now the second group of genes which are mutated in the familial variety of uh, pheochromocytomas are those which increase the activity and the stability of two hypoxia inducible tra uh, transcription factors that is hif1 alpha and hif2 alpha and they induce a condition that is called as pseudo hypoxia now what are the genes over here which is implicated number one there is a loss of function mutation in the vhl von hippel lindau gene and it leads to a syndrome called as von hippel lindau syndrome the second important uh, gene is the gain of function mutation in apas1 gene and the syndrome associated is your polycythemia paraganglioma syndrome the third important genes which is implicated is a group of genes that is succinate dehydrogenate uh, encoding genes that is hdh b c and d these three genes are implicated in the mitochondrial electron transport system and mutations in these genes again leads to a syndrome called as hereditary paragangliomas type 4 3 and 1 respectively that is uh, hdhb mutation will lead to paragangliom 4 hdhc mutation will lead to paragangliom number 3 and hdhd mutation will lead to paragangliom number 1 okay now let let us uh, come and see the morphology of pheochromocytoma so grossly average weight it can be variable it can be as small as 1 gram and malignant tumors can get, can go as high as 1 kg so the average weight of a pheochromocytoma is around 100 grams on cut section they are reddish brown Uh, sometimes they might show yellowish tan larger lesions can show areas of hemorrhage necrosis as well as cystic changes usually these are very well circumscribed and on the periphery they might show compressed cortical or medullary tissue now if you take a fresh tissue and if you soak it in the potassium dichromate solution it is going to turn the tumor dark brown because of the oxidation of the stored catecholamines this reaction is called as chromaffin reaction and it is classically seen with tumors of the adrenal medulla secreting catecholamines that is your pheochromocytoma so this is the gross appearance if you can appreciate is a well demarcated lesion as you can appreciate over here majority of the pheochromocytomas they are benign in nature on one side you can see a very very small amount of tissue which has been compressed and pushed so the remaining normal tissue is pushed or the medullary tissue or the cortical tissue is put to the periphery now this is the fresh tissue which was immersed in potassium dichromate solution potassium dichromate solution and which has turned this entire specimen into dark brown color this has turned this specimen into dark brown color <coughs> okay and why why it has uh, turned it into dark brown color because of the oxidation of catecholamines and what is the name of this reaction it is called as chromaffin reaction it is classically seen in pheochromocytoma and is a very very important exam question now this is the larger uh, pheochromocytoma the larger ones can show areas of hemorrhage and necrosis as we can appreciate now coming to the microscopic features so microscopically under the microscope you see a characteristic pattern that is called as a zell bollen pattern wherein the tumors are present in clusters and nest i will show you the diagram now this zell bollen pattern is present in any or other kind of paraganglioma as well okay in all kinds of paragangliomas they are present okay they are present in all kinds of paragangliomas very important exam mcq and and basically these clusters are composed of poly Polygonal to spindle-shaped chromaffin or chief cell, surrounded by sustained tacular cells supplied by a rich vascular network. Okay, if you look at the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm is abundant granular because of presence of granules containing catecholamines, and these are best demonstrated by silver stains. The nucleus has a typical salt and pepper chromatin. Again, a very important MCQ. In the electron microscopy, you see electron dense neurosecretory granules. Very, very exam important MCQ. now coming to the immunohistochemistry the chief cells okay the chief cells uh, basically stain for chromogranin synaptophysin neuron specific enolase cd56 cd57 cd68 the chief cells or the chromaffin cells they stain for these important markers okay this is basically the tumor cells showing the positivity the supporting sustained tacular cells they are positive for s100 now sometimes you might see bizarre cells also present in case of benign pheochromocytoma now uh, to label a pheochromocytoma as malignant is 
very very difficult because no single histological feature can reliably predict the clinical behavior but there are certain important features which might point towards malignancy for example increased mitosis increased ki 67 index increased amount of necrosis spindle cell morphology all of these are associated with an aggressive behavior and a very highly increased risk of metastasis okay now now very important the very important mcq and also one of the important mcqs which i have already discussed in the community post the definitive diagnosis of malignancy in case of a pheochromocytoma is based on the presence of metastasis so the one important feature that can decide whether a pheochromocytoma is benign or malignant is the presence of metastasis very very important exam question the other important exam question is the lab diagnosis of pheochromocytoma so the lab diagnosis is basically con formed by the increased urinary excretion of free catecholamines and their metabolites especially vma that is vanyl mandenic acid metanephrines and normetanephrines okay so these are the metabolites along with the catecholamines epinephrine norepinephrine will be present in the urine and the demonstration of such things in the urine is diagnostic of pheochromocytoma coming to the clinical features of pheochromocytoma 90% of the cases are uh, showing hypertension and around 2/3 uh, of the patients which are having hypertension they show a paroxysmal episode characterized by an abrupt rise in the blood pressure okay now uh, such patients are at a high risk of development of heart failure myocardial infarction cerebrovascular attack or accident and pulmonary edema now the cardiac complication of pheochromocytoma is catecholamine cardiomyopathy and ventricular arrhythmias and apart from the catecholamines which are secreted by the pheochromocytoma it also secretes other hormones like acth as well as somatostatin so this can also be asked as an important exam question coming to the microscopic feature of pheochromocytoma if you see the characteristic appearance of pheochromocytoma is the presence of clusters and nests of tumor cells so this cluster and nest of tumor cells okay this nest and this cluster that you appreciate this is called as the characteristic zell bolin pattern and it is a characteristic feature of any kind of paraganglioma including pheochromocytoma now if you see these cluster of cells they are basically separated by a fibrovascular stroma okay they are with a they are separated by means of fibrovascular stroma as you can appreciate over here and among this fibrovascular stroma are certain supporting cells that is called as sustained tacular cell sustain tacular cells okay now one other important feature of this is that individual cells if you see these are the individual cells if you can appreciate these individual cells they are polygonal they are polygonal sometimes they might be spindle shaped also and the nucleus okay is round oval the nucleus is round or oval in nature and they have a prominent nuclei they have a prominent nucleoli with this we complete the entire discussion of pheochromocytoma and i hope you have thoroughly enjoyed and you have gained a lot of information from this video if you think that you have done so kindly do share and subscribe my videos and please do like and comment because only if you like and comment the youtube is going to understand this as a nice channel and it can help me grow my channel thank you very much guys for watching this video stay tuned for more such lectures